I have another cook and chat with me about some scents because I have no choice but to eat so that gives me motivation while I'm standing here cooking I might as well make a video for YouTube so the topic for today is five easy reach fragrances like no brainers for me that if ever I'm in doubt I just reach for them and kind of a spoiler alert none of them are rose perfumes and I didn't even realize that until I lined them up so that's a little bit of a shocker I don't know what that's all about but anyway Welcome back, Habibi. Thank you so much for being here. I always appreciate you. So let's just, let's get into it. Oh, just so that you guys know, um, what I'm cooking today is, or sauteing, is Swiss chard, fresh Swiss chard. And then I'll be baking some fringling potatoes. I think it looked yummy. Well, it's raw, but imagine it was raw. Anyway, so we're just gonna get right into it. Okay, so the first one, let me just turn the stove on. Okay, now my oil. Just basic olive oil okay so the first one do you know those days where you are not sure what to wear but you just want something easy no fuss but you know you're gonna smell good and you want something that lasts because you know you'll be running around all day and you don't want to worry about re-upping your fragrance there are days I don't care if my fragrance doesn't last but there are some days that maybe I do right I have different moods different facets some days I want to be um, smelled four or five six hours later. So the first one I have is a hidden gem I haven't heard anybody talk about, but I talked about in the spring, I believe. It is giving me total early 2000s vibes. Although this from, from Fragrantica, from what I can gather, was created around 2016, 2017, perhaps even 2019, but the point is it was not made early 2000s. So I was a little shooketh when I found out about this. And so what I'm talking about is a brand called Adolfo Dominguez and the name of this is Bamboo Radiant Edition but this is the Mohair version. Gosh and a little little fun thing about this you'll never forget never guess who the perfumer is. Adolfo Dominguez's um, brand had Ramon Manigal. Yes I said Ramon Manigal. This is his perfume for this brand. Isn't that crazy? Anyway back to the perfume. So if you ever liked um What's it? It's eluding me right now. Oh, Dream by um, by Gap, right? Um, from the early 2000s. I went through bottles of that scent. I adored it. It brings back really good memories of it. Um, fresh, a little sweet. It kind of captures that time in a bottle, right? So if you appreciate something like this, you're going to appreciate something like this. Um, it has a clean scent, very clean, but not abrasive, because sometimes I don't, well, a lot of the times, I don't like soapy scents. However, this manages to have a fresh and clean feel, just like Dream by um, by The Gap, if you're into that sort of thing, without it being in your face. There's a little bit of powderiness, more in the texture than in the scent. And this heliotrope, I think it's probably, that's where it's coming from, and a weird note of bamboo, which gives it a little bit of greenness. And it just captures that beautiful time for me. Again, I was a little stunned when I read um, when it was actually created, but maybe that might have been his point. Maybe consciously, unconsciously, he tried to capture nostalgia in a bottle. Um, and there's a little bit of sweetness. And so this doesn't have like a shampoo-y or a shower gel um, scent, not at all. Do you know how when you wash your hair with shampoo and you come out, out of the shower and you let your hair air dry, not below dry, okay? It has to air dry. And then you waft your hair or you move around and somebody catches or you even catch a whiff of your own hair. That is the smell, the residual shampoo in your hair. That's kind of what I get in here. And it just is easy reach for me. If you kind of like dream by, um, by Gap, I think that was unisex. Actually, quite frankly, I don't know. But if you like that kind of thing, I think you can even get with this, even though it says mujer, it's a little sweet, but it's also fresh. Um, I just think it's highly underrated. And if you, sounds like something you are into or you like Ramon Monegal and his kind of works, this is kind of one that's not like the other from his other creations. So I guess maybe he might've been experimenting with this, but we all have different aspects to our nose and personality. So that could be what's going on here. So something you might want to check out is affordable, I think about $30 on FragranceNet. And again, I'll, I'll put the name down below, but it's Bamboo Radiant Edition Mujer 
by Adolfo Dominguez, and they also have a male's version if you want to check that out, but I, I cannot tell you what it smells like. Alrighty, so while that, um, wait, I'm just saute this a little bit. I'm going to let that, um, the onion soften up a little bit, so I'll talk about the next one, because I won't be chopping garlic this time. I have pre-crushed garlic that I had in the freezer that I'll just be using to flavor. Okay, so the next one, again, when I came on YouTube, I hadn't heard anybody talk about or know about but earlier in my channel, when I did my Middle Eastern collection video, I had said the scent <laughs> reminded me of Johnson's and Johnson's baby powder that went to Harvard. What am I talking about? This is Violet Musk by Ajman. And it is exactly what it sounds like. There's, oh God, it's so good. Here's the thing. I think I even wrote about it in my community, my, my community tab. I love how it's not quite which, I mean, it is exactly what you expect, but also not. This is not a dupe for anything. Everything in this Ajma line is of its own thing, right? Does it probably resemble other must scents? I mean, for goodness sake, does any other design, designer perfume kind of, you know, resemble this or that? Yes, sure. All must can kind of set, um, smell like, but this one, as it starts to dry down, you have the musk and the, um, iris kind of um iris slash um like a powdery note in the beginning at the violet slash iris but then as it starts to warm up there's a yellowing note and a pink dewy rose i've even said this earlier in my time this pink dewy rose that starts to bloom but it's not too much so it doesn't become like a rose scent but the rose is supporting the musk and the, the powderiness and the yellowing yellowing uh, i'm pronouncing right but literally whatever it actually comes more prominent than the rose. There's nothing that I smelled like this. It is unisex. If you like musky scents, it is just gorgeous. And I got this for about $90, but I think you can. Well, actually, no, that's not true. I think I got about $60. So this, you can get about $40 to $60, depending on what time you look or where you look. Um, but again, this is a Middle Eastern brand, but this is a very clean, smell maybe some people <laughs> love 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 clean musky scents in addition to wood and rose and everything but this is just an easier it's like the days that i'm in doubt i just kind of reach for it and spray it on and it has really decent longevity it's not a beast in any means but i also don't want it to be you know what i mean um and i'm not offensive and it is complimenting if you care about care about that i'm just letting you know for people who do for me, if I like a scent, I'm gonna like it no matter what. But it's kind of cool when it's appreciated by other people. So if you want a really easy, unisex, musky scent that is made a little bit different with that ylang-ylang and um, dewy rose, but the rose is not prominent. It's in the background, but you can sense it in there. Violet Musk by Ajmed. Let me just quickly stir this in a minute. How are you guys doing? Doing okay today? <laughs> this during my food. All right, so the next one is going to be another affordable one too, another um, Middle Eastern brand. And I think this might be an inspired by maybe a Creed Aventus or something for her, but I actually can't remember off the top of my head. I've had this since before I started YouTube and I love this. And it's easy for me to just grab when I, again, I cannot think. And it is perfectly work appropriate, but perfectly everyday appropriate. And people love it. I love it, and the people around me love it. This is Resena by Resasi. Well, it's a Kasamic line. I have the whole line, but this is my favorite thus far. Um, can you see the bottle here? So, Resena by Resasi. Now, what is this? You get crisp apple on the opening. There's a little bit of dry sweetness. Woodsy. I mean, there's a little bit of leather on the dry down. I don't know if there's oud in here, I don't know, but I, I do get a wood on the dry down. Completely inoffensive, a really strong performer, and what tops it all off is that it is affordable. You can get it around $40. I mean, this is just a no-brainer for me. I just, oh God, it's so good. And, I'm really not into, oh, and it's also slightly aquatic. I'm not really into those kind of like fresh and clean scents, as I just mentioned two other, 
Okay, maybe that's not the word. I'm not too much into aquatic scents. Like, I like them, but it's not something I necessarily gravitate to. Mm, but, you know, these are more musky. These are more musky. Okay, no, no, no. It still rings true. It still rings true. Aquatic-ish kind of scents, sharp scents. But this is just a win-win. And if I ever ran out of this, I'm this much. Because you don't need more than maybe four sprays, maybe five. You know, you don't need more than that. I, I wouldn't suggest going strong with this for men and for women equally, equally, equally. All right. So let me start chopping. I'll bring onto screen this one. This is Weissa Libre um, EDP, the original, right? So love this one. And in my humble opinion, I mentioned this a while ago um, on my channel, is if you like floral scents for men, this is unisex. But you have to like jasmine. You have to like... Um, florals, quite frankly. You have to be able to drive with it, because if not, then stay away from this. But for me, as you can see, I'm literally, this is not going to last till the end of the year. Adore this. There's a rolly orange blossom, but there's ambergris and there's vetiver, and what makes it stand out and really brings this to the forefront for me, that lavender note in here. But it's not too sharp, at least not to me, because sometimes lavender can come off soaky to me, and sometimes that can be a good thing, and sometimes it's just not my vibe. And out of the whole YSL Libre line, it's a solid line, okay? Um, I like this under sense. It's a solid line. Um, the intense one is very pretty, compliment grabbing, but it's not something I crave, and it's not something I can wear on a day to day basis with what my preferences are. It's crisp. This is crisp, it's clean. Um, it does grab compliments. Again, not my my purpose but it does and just letting you guys know as a data point it grabs compliments and i love that it mixes really amicably with other scents this is one i really really enjoy mixing and if you don't know what i mean by mixing i mean by layering i really enjoy layering Ooh, i don't want to burn myself i can burn myself yeah that went in the grate um anyway what was it saying oh yes why is it leave give me one second let me just put this in there a little salt so I can just spray it down. Sorry, I'm so mad at this. Give me one second. Kind of pull off the water a little bit. Okay. So there's also better for you here on the dry down, and I knew there was a new one. I think it's called Platine. I haven't tried that one. Um, I think it's a little metallic, and I think it's pretty cool. And I've really tried all the other ones. I've tried the Parfum. I think the intense one. The Ata Parfum, the one with the saffron and honey in it, it's cute. It's really pretty, but it's not my vibe. Like, I, I have a travel of it, but I never reach for it. And I don't think I ever will. And I love saffron, so I was a little shocked that I don't... Not that I don't like it, it doesn't, it doesn't vibe with me. Because I can objectively see why it's mass appealing. Um, I don't know, it's just not my vibe. I think maybe it might be too heavy or too sweet. I don't know what it is. I don't know what it is. But this uh, crispness... A crispness, crispness, a crisp element to this that I absolutely adore and I just can't quite get enough of. And I tend to like the, the note Neroli. And just an honorable mention is um, Al Mason Alhambra Porto Neroli. I mentioned that like months ago, my, like beginning of the year on my channel. Love that one. There's a reason why I'm not mentioning that one because I believe they're discontinuing it. But if you're able to find Porto Neroli by Mason Alhambra, just get it. Just get it. If you like fresh scents, if you like Neroli scents, actually, scratch the fresh. If you like Neroli scents, just get it. Just get it. Zero, zero regrets had for me and for the people I've recommended it to. As a short, I think it's a stupid amount of views, like maybe 5,000. The numbers are actually irrelevant. The comments is what I pay attention to. They're... A lot of people were saying, well, in that, in, in that comments, actually I'm blanking, what the heck did they say? Oh yeah, one girl was telling me how it brought a sort of nostalgia when she smelled it, and I thought that was really precious. I thought it was really precious that that they did that for her, and I love that about sense. You'll never really know sometimes, I'm just squeezing out the juices because I'm going to take the zest and put it in there for a little extra flavor. I'm just getting the juices out. Anyway, um, it's amazing. You'll never know what fits on nostalgia you know, for you, and it is... A replica of Tom Ford's Porto Neroli and this is one of the Tom Ford's that I highly critique um, 
that the price doesn't match the quality. They, they need to slash the price for, um, for that one. And here's another thing I kind of want to note. Like, I understand I can get it on a discounter, but I'm not critiquing the people who love it. Even Must Therapy, like, I went in on that fragrance. Well, I'm going off on a side tangent here. I went in on that fragrance. I'm not critiquing people who love it or like it. My my critique was in Q&A. I very clearly said, said it in that video. And I'm not obnoxious because I don't like it. You know, let's, let's be nice ladies. But my critique was I'm judging a company based on what they slap a, a retail price on. You know what I mean? Like I understand I can get it discounted, but to me it's the principle of the matter. What they had the nerve to slap a price on so Tom Ford Portuneroli or Must There Be by Initio, I judge them by the retail price. I hope that makes sense. Like, I know we can get a discounted blah, 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 secondhand, yada, 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 but I'm critiquing the companies because we need to be more aware because if you're going to charge um, a, a certain amount of money, how, how the heck did I get from talking about this to that? Anyway, oh yes, the, the note of Neroli. Right, right, right. If you're gonna charge that kind of exorbitant amount of money, because to me anything over like 150 is a lot of money. Anything over 300 is exorbitant. So you see what I'm saying here? And people work hard for their money and not everybody has disposable income to do it. And even if they had the disposable income, they may simply not want to do it. I may not look, I may not look like I'm stingy, but I'm actually a little stingy. I may not look it. I mean, I like it, but I'm a little, I'm a little stingy, okay? I learned that from my, my baba, okay? I'm a little stingy. Um, so I, I, I bear that in mind, and I don't critique the companies to be mean. I just feel like sometimes people need to be, and I'm not saying they're listening to me, I'm not saying that. But I do feel like the conversation, and it still needs to be said, to just be mindful of the prices we're slapping on. Like, I I know I can get must therapy in this show for much cheaper on a discount or secondhand from somebody, yada, yada, yada. But the fact of the matter is, it retails for $370, and while it is a pretty cent, that is all it is. The price needs to be slashed. It needs to be slashed. And it's simplistic. It's pretty, but it's simplistic. And the quality does not match the $370 prices. There are perfumes in my collection, which I feel like telling the perfumer, you undercharged. Do you know what I'm saying? It is simplistic, and there's nothing wrong with simple fragrances. I love my simple fragrances, but not for $370 retail. And I get it, I can get it for a discount, that's not the point. The principle of the matter is they have the cojones to slap that price on it. I hope that makes sense. Now, I have other initials. It's the originality is well worth the price. And I also think once you cross that $300 mark, past $300, I understand beauty is in the eye of the, the nose of the behold, blah, blah, blah. But it also is an onus on the perfumer to, because we're paying for the creativity, I understand that. But the onus is also on them to bring a certain level of originality to it. I hope that makes sense. I hope I'm making sense. How the heck did I get from this to a whole rant about price? Anyway, those are my thoughts on it. Um, so I don't, I don't ever want to be all honky dory in my channel because that's not life. Um, it's okay to critique. It's okay to have thoughts. It's okay not to agree with people as long as you do it respectfully. You know, you don't get this role. You don't disrespect people. And it's okay to critique a perfume, but not critique the person, like not insult the people that like it or not like it, okay? Wow, too much commentary on that. Ooh, I still have one more. Mmm. I really, one of my faves for life. Wait, one second, baby. One second. I need to focus on this for a second. Okay, I think that should be enough zest. So I'm just going to let that sweat down for a little bit. Let me just season up a little bit. Uh, I'm going to put a little bit of cumin in here. I mean, just a little bit, just for a little bit of flavor. Um, I don't measure my seasonings. I just go with my feeling. Oh, and this one is just crushed red pepper flakes. Because why not? And you see, E to be tea, a little bit more salt. And then I'm gonna wash the fingerling potatoes. All right, so I'm just gonna let that sweat down. All right, so the last one up is another designer scent. Let me move this out of the frame. It is Chanel number 1980 tea. 
by Henry Roberts. Um, and yes, this, this is the descent of um, Chanel, Gabrielle Chanel. Yeah, I said right now. Coco, right? Um, let me just wash this quickly. Give me a moment. Give it a quick rinse. How's the weather by you guys? I know it's getting warmer in other parts of the world, but getting colder here. I'm knitting. Alrighty. Now, Chanel number 19. It definitely is a forever favorite of mine. I have the vintage, um, literally a vintage formulation, I think from the 80s, late 70s or 80s. I don't remember. I got it like almost nine years ago. No regrets had I bought it at an estate sale. Oh, one of my most prized possessions. And because I'm getting so low on it, I have like this much left, which I meticulously take care of and protect. Um, that, because I don't want to touch that or just go and sniff it or really, really use it. Um, I was forced to get this one. And look what I did yesterday. I don't know if you can see it. I, I break, I drop a lot of bottles. That's how I broke my Ganymede, rest in peace. It wasn't because there was a defect with the cap or anything. It, the bottle itself slipped out of my hand. So that's why sometimes I don't record because you're going to get a lot of oopsies. Some days I, I just drop a lot of things. Anyways, um, I dropped this yesterday and look, literally look. Oh God, it just broke my heart a little bit. And look, it even cracked a little bit here. Gosh, what a shame. But the scent is still the same, so that's pretty cool. And it still works. Um, there's galbanum in it. Um, gosh, it gives a little bit of bitterness. It is green. It's a little powdery, a little woody. It's just a forever scent for me. I'm just gonna slice these in half. And then I'm gonna put them on a, a baking tray and just flavor them with like olive oil, salt, and pepper, and literally, that's it. So I'm just gonna split them in half. Yeah, so it's just an easy scent, and you may actually not believe this. Well, actually, if you are familiar with the scent, you'll, you, you will believe this, actually. Wearing the vintage Chanel number no. 19, I think like last year when I was in New York, or earlier this year when I was in New York, I don't know, whichever trip I was on the last one, not the previous one, the last one, yeah, yeah, yeah. I actually got compliments of Chanel number no. 19, the vintage version. Nothing like, oh my God, you smell so sexy. No, no, no. Oh, it was just like, oh, you smell nice. You smell nice. That's it, it's an inoffensive, oh, you smell nice, right? So that was with the vintage version. Can you believe it, right? So it doesn't smell dated. And it fascinates me how perfumers can create evergreen scents something that is not of the trend. Do you understand how forward thinking you need to be to create something like this from Henry Robert creating something like this for Coco Chanel, but then literally here I am in 2023 and many of us in 2023 still loving and adoring this bloody fragrance. Come on now, what kind of bloody genius is that? Just, this is why I don't follow trends just because in a year, Heck, six months, three months, three weeks, you get tired of it, right? Um, there's nothing wrong with trends. I'm just saying it's just not my personality because it's just so fickle. And while fickle can be fun, right? It can be fun. Um, for those of us who prefer less uh, funk, I guess if you can say, or less up and downs, you just want more constant, stable classic scents are it. And if you have not tried this, if that sounds appealing to you, like something classic and Evergreen, not in terms of like evergreen, it doesn't smell like a pine tree. It is green, but it doesn't smell like a pine tree. When I mean evergreen, no matter what time of year you look at an evergreen tree, what is it? It is green. In the winter, in the spring, in the summer, it stays green. So this is a classic scent. It will withstand the test of time. And I have no doubt in another 20 years, somebody will be analyzing or just appreciating. Forget even about analyzing it cerebrally, just smelling it. I'm not going to make that much. Yeah, I'm not gonna make much make maybe a couple more potatoes. Um, and say, God, this is a really bloody amazing fragrance. And even if you, you think you don't like Chanel for whatever reason or whatever perception you may have, I would implore you to go into store, and by the way, it's, it's not discontinued. I would implore you, I mean, they did change the formulation, but let me not get into that because it's gonna hurt my heart. Go into the store, go into Macy's. I'm pretty sure, yeah, Macy's has, um, yeah, they do. I'm pretty sure. Whatever. Just Google it, okay? Google whatever comes up for your local algorithm and go into a store and test it out. 
And it would be actually, I would be hard pressed to believe <laughs> that you don't like this scent. I'm not saying you're gonna love it, right? Because some people may not love this. But I will be hard pressed to believe that uh, you don't like it. I'm gonna, I'm not gonna, I'm gonna, I'm not gonna believe that. Okay, so I have all the fragrances that I talked about. So let me just do a quick recap, and I'm gonna throw this up in the oven. Um, season and throw in the oven and just let this saute down a little bit more and then I'm gonna eat because I'm a human and that's what I have to do. Okay, Bamboo Radiant Mujer. Bamboo Radiant Edition Mujer by Adolfo Dominguez and the perfumer was Ramon Manigal. Can you believe it? The second one I covered was Violet Musk by Ajmel. The third one was uh, Resana by Resensi. And then YSL Lieb, the original, EDP, and Chanel number 19, EDD. Alrighty, Habibis, um, let me know if you have tried any of these, any of you like them, are there any easy reaches that you guys have um, that you think people would appreciate, maybe people do appreciate, and it's just your your easy reach. So let me know down below, and I hope you guys are doing well. And just a gentle reminder, the sweetest fragrance we will ever wear are not perfumes, but our behavior. And another gentle reminder, please find somebody to thank today. Even if it's for something small, more importantly, take a moment to thank God. Because if you're watching in this video, that means we made it into yet another day. And even with all trials and tribulations, God is great. Thank you, my friend. Bye.